Today we are going to be talking about mobile and where the whole mobile space is evolving today. And we have uh, two great panelists joining me who are going to share their perspectives, very different perspectives. Uh, and I'm going to start by updating you on how this uh, space is actually moving. First of all, before we get started with anything else, make sure you tweet. Tweet us your questions and uh, tweet your comments and thoughts as well. We'd love to hear your opinions. So you can just use at think underscore tourism and the hashtag ATM2016 uh, to get in touch. And we've got a very interactive social team that will get straight back to you. So do try that. Right, so let me first introduce today's panel. Well, I'm Nick Hall. I'm the founder of the Digital Tourism Think Tank. We have been uh, promoting thought leadership in digital for much of the last five years. And we monitor the trends happening in the industry. And we try to uh, help you guys to become more on trend, more innovative, and seek out the best practices happening. So that's me. Uh, joined over here on the furthest, uh, on your right, we have Gerd Jan Van Wyk from Travel Audience. Now, Travel Audience, uh, he's going to introduce Travel Audience. We're very proud to have them as one of our partners. Um, they are doing some very interesting things in this space, and you're going to hear a lot more about them over the coming weeks, months, and years. Um, but for now, I will uh, leave it uh, to the introductions, and uh, you'll tell us a bit more about Travel Audience in just a moment. And here we have also Adam Ridgeway. Adam, you are, uh, I think we can still call you a startup. So you're going to talk about how you've actually gone with a mobile-first approach into the startup space and talking about mobile content. So I'm sure you'll agree, some very interesting perspectives there. I'm going to get started by giving an overview of how we see the space evolving. And there's some really exciting things happening. So first of all, let's look at some use case scenarios where mobile really, really makes sense for your brand as a travel brand, as a hotel, or as a destination. The first is loyalty. Loyalty is absolutely key when it comes to succeeding in mobile. Loyalty is where you're going to see your best wins, where you're going to see your highest conversion, where you're actually going to satisfy your customers in the best way with a mobile solution. And I think the best example is actually coming from outside of the travel industry, which is Starbucks. Starbucks is a brand which really, really gets mobile. It's ultra simple. It's very, very user-centric, and it's built on a very smart model to actually build engagement and loyalty. And they really target early adopters. And this is an opportunity which, unfortunately, most of the travel industry doesn't think about, but the opportunity to be first in something and to be the best. So Starbucks is really, really out there. And they've tapped into some of the big opportunities of context awareness. They're using beacons now to drive further sales. I'll talk about that a little bit later on. And it's also about a, having a deeply personalized experience. Of course, if you download a mobile app to your device, most of you probably also delete it within two or three seconds when you realize it's actually not what you wanted. So to have a mobile app which is successful, you have to actually tap into people's personal interests to something which really, really is going to add value to their mobile experience, whether that's making transactions easier, maybe making the experience better, or providing them with something which they really couldn't get any other way. It's not a given that you should develop mobile apps. So as you can see here with Starbucks, they've really, really got to a very sophisticated level where you can order your drinks and your food before you even get to the store. And then when you go through the door, you can pick it up because beacons actually installed at the entrance to the, uh, to the restaurant detect when you've entered. Now, this is something which the tourism industry really, really needs to get up to date with and actually tap into because it's a huge opportunity. And this is not about giving people a price advantage. This is entirely about giving people the advantage of convenience and also tapping in to a, a very dominant, but very important market, which is the millennial market, for craving for digital experiences. And of course, loyalty is at the heart of this, uh, and also some sort of gamification. So if you shake the app, your gold stars will rattle around that cup. And of course, this makes loyalty not only fun, but it pushes you to keep ordering. So there's a lot of components in this very, very simple app that I think the travel industry can learn from which come to loyalty, convenience, and mobile payments. So do go ahead and look at that. The second aspect which I want to talk about is discovery. 
And as you see here, I put everywhere, time relevant and personalized. If you think about these things, you'll probably be on the right track for your mobile strategy. Timely, relevant, and personalized. Just think about this throughout everything you do. Of course, uh, we like to now travel like a local. This is now something that millennials are absolutely craving. They want to have that local experience. They don't want to enter a destination and be branded as a tourist. They want to know exactly what's going on, who's doing the best things, where the party is at. And we see apps like Foursquare, which are very, very deeply socially driven, which are really, really helping to do that. They're helping to tap into these so-called uh, social or travel tribes where there's real opportunities. And of course, the social web is now very deeply integrated with the mobile web, which is then helping to offer a much more personalized, uh, branded, and uh, mobile experience. And of course, uh, often people talk to me about uh, wearables and where wearables is going. The simple answer to wearables is it's an extension of mobile. It's not something you should have a wearable strategy for. It's an extension of something you're already doing in the mobile space. And as I'm going to show you towards the end of this uh, introduction, we are seeing some really interesting things with beacons developing. This is where everything I'm showing up until now will be supercharged in the coming years. So the next is offering your customers a sense of advantage. Um, so we see here with Starwoods, they've used the Aloft hotel chain as a, a sort of test bed for what you can potentially do with your mobile offering. Here we see Starwoods using uh, mobile to actually allow their customers to unlock their door when they actually enter. And this is something which also drives loyalty. So the most regular customers are the ones who are going to be most interested in using this. And of course, most likely to go back because they enjoy that experience. Again, that is tapping into the interests of a tech-bred generation which is really seeking that. But it's also a couple of things to take away from this. This idea of KISS, keep it super simple. Or keep it simple stupid, sorry. This is something which we have spoken about in the tech industry for years and years, and it still applies today. Whatever you're doing, make sure it has a one core function or purpose and do it really, really well. And of course, it's really important for you to be successful in this space to prioritize interface and user experience. And also now, more and more, to start thinking about mobile payment. With things like Apple Pay now mainstream in several markets, this is a space which is only going to evolve much further and much faster. And where you have this so-called closed wall environment, where you really lock your customer into your experience, this is also where you're going to see better engagement. But that's not for everybody. I've got an example here also about how attractions are using beacons to transmit information with ultra proximity. So as you go near a painting here, you see the details of that painting pushed through to your mobile device. This is something which is actually not, you don't have all of that data being pushed through to the mobile device. It's already sitting on the mobile device. But the beacon is simply sending information about which piece of data to pull up. So beacons are very simple, very uh, low energy. They last for more than a year on a single charge, but they have the potential to open up a lot more from the physical environment. What I should say is, be wary of some of these new things which also get launched. So in the case here, this is the Rubens Museum in Antwerp. And we actually had a good chat with the people who were behind this. And for them, it wasn't actually about the user experience. Because they were an early entrant into this space, it was all about PR. And if you're one of the first to do something, you can have huge gains in terms of PR. And sometimes that is worth it. So the last part of my opening introduction is to talk about intelligence. And this is where I really see the space moving. Where mobile can start to give you amazing intelligence is where you can start to really, really optimize your activities based on mobile data. So here is some data from Telefonica, which shows the traffic from tourists within the island of Las Palmas. And as you can see, the red spots, this is a heat map, so the red spots show the highest density of traffic from tourists. Now, this is actually coming from mobile data. There are a million and one ways to gather this kind of data. Beacons are also another way to actually have a so-called social listening. So in a room like this, you may have a beacon installed, and then in another theater, you may have another beacon installed. And you can listen to the number of devices within that environment 
and start to have a better understanding of how densely populated it is. So if you're an attraction or you're a hotel where, you, where service is at the center of what you do, it's really, really valuable to understand if your services are likely to be stretched. Something very simple, but there's some amazing solutions out there. Again, here we see within a much smaller proximity, within a city, you have these different grids within the mobile network. And again, you can see the population density over certain periods of time. Now, if you monitor this over an hour, over a day, over a week, over a month, and then a year, <coughs> you can really start to see <coughs> excuse me, you can really start to see some very, very interesting patterns about how people travel through um, a destination, through a place, and what times of day they do that, and actually then start to plan your services accordingly. I've got some really interesting data here which actually shows how mobile data can help you to tap in to the better understanding about different markets as well. So in this case, this is data from Barcelona. We can see here that Russian visitors are on average spending more than eight days in the destination compared to visitors from China at the very bottom end spending much fewer. Now this is really, really valuable intelligence that actually our traditional methods of research don't necessarily always tell us with such accuracy. And furthermore, you can see the patterns <coughs> excuse me, throughout the day when people actually visit uh, the, a certain cell or a certain place within the city. So you can really drill down to detail one thing here, they realized that on Mondays, they had actually a much higher footfall than they actually expected. And simply by monitoring mobile traffic, they were able to then respond to that and deal with that. And of course, Saturdays and Fridays, much higher than, um, than you might expect. <coughs> you can also see, with this kind of data then, how long people dwell within a certain area. So here, really fantastic data which shows you how long they spend during a week compared to the weekday in different areas, whether they spend between under 30 minutes, whether they spend up to one hour or further. And then also breaking that data down, this is where it depends how much data you actually use within your mobile strategy, breaking that data down to better understand your customers as well. So here we have it broken down between men and women. We see that men don't like to spend very long in anywhere. And once we get to the longer periods of time, it's actually women who are spending longer there. So in terms of how to actually tap into the opportunity of upselling in the mobile space, this is hugely valuable. <coughs> now, when it comes to intelligence, uh, there are so many ways that you can get intelligence about your mobile visitor. Beacons is something that you can deploy and you can be fully in control with and you can monitor what's happening in that space. But also, the so-called big data that everyone gets so excited about, it's already being crunched and then reported back to you guys on a daily basis. So here is um, just an example of one of my favorite cafes in, um, in Brussels. It's a place called Café Belga, and Google is monitoring all the time, based on people's activity on Google, what is actually happening in that space. So they are actually able to tell you the peak times and how people travel through that. So it's just a little example of the intelligence you can already start thinking about if you're, especially if you're a small business, this is hugely valuable. Now the last one is this so-called notion of the physical web. And this is what I see as the future. This is what I see as the exciting space that's developing right now. This is where we no longer need to think about beacons and then about mobile apps as the way to interact with them. This is about deploying beacons anywhere within any point in your business. So this could be having a beacon in every single hotel room, just to give you an example, and then being able to communicate with every single beacon. This is where the web, as we know it, which is entirely online, comes in touch with the physical environment, which in the future will be entirely online as well. Every single touch point will, you'll be able to connect with. Here we have an example of a new project, well, a new initiative by Google, which is actually opening and democratizing uh, with an open data format, the ability to tap into this. So we have here uh, just a very simple example of being on a bus and being able to see which beacons are around you on that bus, and then being able to see the um, estimated time of arrival or the stops that that bus is going, without the need to actually develop any kind of app solution or have any kind of relationship that existed before with that customer. This is really, really invaluable for the travel industry. Um, 
Now, I think it's better told by somebody who can actually explain this space. So I've got a minute video, which really helps you understand that better. Um, and then we'll head over to our panel, who are going to share their thoughts from both how you engage and how you, enge um, and how you reach people in this space. They tap on the parking meter, they are taken to a location. They just add the time they want and hit pay. All of the building is taken care of in the cloud, and once that's done, it just authorizes the meter. So what's happening here? The physical web URL points to a web page of a standard web server that connects to a small controller here inside the parking meter. When the purchase goes through, it uses a web socket to mess super work, which then adds the time. While the movie poster took you on a journey from the beacon to the phone and then straight to the web, here the parking meter completes the loop, interacting directly with the machine right in front of you, all just using standard web technologies. I want to stress this just a bit. The physical web is only about getting the URL to the phone. Everything else after that is just using the web. In this example, all the real work is done by using web sockets. That's the idea behind the physical web. Objects can broadcast URLs wirelessly to the area around them. Anyone with a phone or tablet nearby can scan the area, pick an object, and interact with it on the spot. So that is a really, really exciting development. This means that you now need to just think about how you're going to deploy your beacons in the future and what purpose they're going to serve in every single region, every single micro region within your business. This is no longer about developing apps as solutions for beacons. This is about actually extending the online web into the physical environment. And I think it's in a really exciting space where we're going to see a huge number of new use case scenarios that are going So there's my opening thoughts. Thank you very much. I'm going to hand over now to Gert, who's going to talk about how you actually reach your customers. And they have uh, also some really interesting insights, being part of the Amadeus group. And you're going to share this with us. So thanks very much. So hello, uh, my name is Hedjan from I um, work for Travel Audience, uh, startup within the Amadeus world. For those who don't know uh, Amadeus, it's uh, yeah, the world's largest GDS, um, an IT company that builds uh, systems for uh, OTAs, for airlines, even for airports. And um, what is interesting, both for mobile as well for for in general and digital, is that things become um, real time. Right? We know what people are searching for, what people are booking. Uh, what they're looking for if they're in the inspiration phase or close, uh, close for the actual uh, decision. Um, and that's why it's a very interesting age to be in, actually. So I'll just take you a few minutes and present a, a bit of what Travel Audience does. If you have any questions, please uh, raise your hand and speak up. Uh, if not, I'll just continue. And then uh, we look into the, the mobile challenge, which is for advertising, and that's what we, uh, w the world we are in, digital advertising. Uh, Still a bit of a challenge, and I'll explain you later uh, why that is. So Travel Audience um, started a few years ago um, in a promising company that was then acquired by Amadeus. Uh, we are based in Berlin, in Germany. Um, about 60 people, uh, so a small company, but really looking into data and what you can do with data for uh, digital advertising. We, we work with many, obviously, travel companies because Travel Audience is focusing on the travel space. Um, Working with airlines, demos, uh, OTAs, uh, and even travel publishers uh, out there. What is interesting is um, what do you know about the user on the other side? So online is, uh, let's say, you cannot touch it really, but you can track a lot. You can see what people are doing, what people are looking for. Um, 
And again, there are different ways to do that. So on the, on the, the desktop, so the, the web, it's uh, cookie based. So what you're searching in your browser, you can drop a cookie and then you know a little bit of what users are doing. Uh, obviously, cookies can be deleted, so it's not, let's say, the whole truth, but it gives you a good indication of where people are. If you look at what we are doing, uh, obviously, we are gathering uh, data on travelers. Um, depending on the season, uh, these are anywhere between 50 million and 100 million uh, online travelers. And we seg segment those users. So based on their search behavior, uh, they go to a meta, then go to an OTA, and they go to a true operator. And you can see quite well how their, their funnel looks like. And based on where they are in the funnel and what they're looking at, we can then say, okay, for this advertiser, it makes sense to start a conversation with this user. Uh, we do it through mobile as well as through desktop. Um, but I think targeting the user on the right moment with the right message, that's still the challenge, right? So um, with Amadeus behind us, we, have, uh, we tap into this 3.3 billion bookings that are happening uh, every year, uh, which is massive and again, Having a lot of data doesn't necessarily mean you can do something uh, smart with it, right? So we're really looking into, okay, what decisions or what points make it more effective for advertisers to use this, uh, to, to reach this user. Um, so segmenting users, being it a leisure traveler versus business, which is quite obvious, uh, they have different needs and they have different decision-making uh, uh, terms. So they are, just, let's say the business traveler is very, oriented where he needs to go, he makes a short-term decision and he flies next week. If it's a leisure traveler, it might take up to 90 days to decide, okay, we go then and there with the whole family. That's a very easy split, but obviously you want to know is it, if it's leisure, is it a couple or is it a family? Are they luxury oriented or budget oriented? So a lot of things come into play to make these decisions. What is actually this user on the other side looking for? Now, um, I was asked to, to, to look at the mobile part, right? So let's say online have, has been, let's say, into play for the last 20 years and significantly the last 10 years, I would say. And back in the days, we had the conversation with the offline media world. Yeah, people look online, but they don't buy online. So they still go to the shop, uh, very well informed, but they don't buy online. The challenge when discharge, what you see here is uh, how mobile advertising is developing. Uh, the challenge for mobile is a bit of the same thing. So people do browse and do look on the mobile web or on the app, but still go to the desktop because they have to fill in some data or whatever it is that makes it easier to book. However, if you look at this curve uh, in the next three years, uh, the global predictions are that mobile advertising will be at the same level as desktop. And still desktop is not going, uh, still stay, let's say stabilizing or growing a little bit. So you see advertising money is following where the eyeballs are, right? People spend more and more time on the mobile device and uh, less and less on the desktop at home. All right, so there is a big opportunity out there and whether it's through beacons or whether it's uh, through uh, in-app advertising, there's a massive opportunity out there. Um, and already today, um, if you look at how people travel, I think everybody here that, is, that came here to, uh, and is not living here has, has a mobile device on, it, on, on them, right? And probably a little bit annoyed that there's no fr fr uh, free Wi-Fi uh, so you can check in. But anyway, if you see what people do nowadays, they bring on the smartphone, they bring their laptop, uh, the, the iPad, whatever it is. And every time they either get to the airport where they can check into the airport Wi-Fi, if they're in the hotel, they check into the hotel uh, Wi-Fi. And this is a bit of the similar idea of the beacon stuff. So there are a lot of, let's say, Wi-Fi providers that gather this data. And the good thing on a mobile is you have a UUID, so a, um, a unique user ID that cannot be deleted. So this user, you can track anywhere this user is going. So let's say from our perspective, if you haven't booked yet, pre-travel, we are, let's say we can target you, but if you have booked your travel and you're in the destination, there's a lot of, let's say, smaller tour operators in the destination that want to look out for you, to offer you a service, um, and based on your profile, we can then, let's say, uh, reach this user on his mobile device, because still people, if they're in the hotel, they check their local news sites, they still are attached to what is at home, right? And as the d digital ad advertising space is connected, Advertising can be delivered through the mobile uh, towards you. So actually mobile is uh, revolutionizing travel. So already today you see that people use uh, Google Maps to go anywhere. Uh, I did myself twice today as well. 
Um, you look at references, be it TripAdvisor or whatever not, to find, let's say, if you're already there, to find uh, something that you are interested in. Uh, obviously, when you check in, depending on the airline you fly with, but most uh, offer, let's say, mobile check-in. Um, <clears throat> and last but not least, you actually have a, a, a boarding pass on your phone. It's either in the wallet or in the app of your um, uh, airline. And all these, let's say, touch points with mobile also con contact or connect the user again of where he is and what he's doing. So let's say if you're a, a tax-free um, shop or let's say a chain that has a lot of tax-free shops at the airport, let's say mobile advertising is definitely going to help you because the moment people are on the airport and maybe have a small delay, uh, there is a way to get a message to those users. And obviously you don't want to reach everybody, but again, with targeting, I think you can do a very well job in um, getting the right people into your shop. That's just an example. The mobile bookings, again, it, it's, it's a bit of a differentiated picture globally, uh, but it's, it's already mainstream, right? So on average, if you look at air at least, around 17% of bookings are done mobily. Uh, not mobily, by mobile. Um, globally. <laughs> um, and depending if you look at, for instance, APEC, uh, the rates are def definitely higher, 50-60% uh, even. Um, so you as a, a provider of travel products, you should also think how can I be, let's say, bookable not only through the web but also through the mobile platform. And depending if you're integrated in other, let's say, sales channels or if you're just a direct seller yourself, then again the question comes, do I do it through the mobile web or through the app? Um, both things have obviously their advantages. Mobile web is very well because you can search and find easily. Uh, mobile app is because an increased loyalty is there. If you look at this, um, this chart here, and also what, uh, what Nick said before, let's say the loyalty within mobile apps is clearly higher uh, than through desktop. And that's logical, right? So if somebody already downloaded your app, he is a fan or he likes to use your product. People are not just randomly downloading apps and looking at them on a, on a rainy Sunday and say, okay, let's open an app and just book something. So if people have your app, they're probably a loyal client. And you should think of how to, let's say, activate and re engage with this uh, loyal client base. So if people do open the app, the, the chance that they actually book is, is much higher than they will visit your website. Now, what do we do? Um, we do different things. Uh, if you look at the traditional desktop solutions, we see the user from early on. So if people start thinking about the next travel, obviously they search uh, or they visit magazines, they look at content, reviews, and basically the classical funnel of, let's say, the awareness orientation phase until the search compare phase until the booking moment. That's where we are seeing the user and we can target them quite well. And obviously you do this through different means, right? If it's very inspirational, you would like to add video, you would like to add emotion. If it's more, let's compare and book, uh, so lower funnel, you would show prices and, and offers. So the content of your ads should look definitely different uh, than just generic. So here's a bit of the ideas of how that could look like. And what is picking up lately is, or not lately, the last few years is native advertising. So native advertising, for instance, if you go to Amazon and you search something, you see recommendations of what people also have looked for. This is a small, a smart algorithm that says, okay, people that typically are interested in this kind of products also might be willing to look for this. So native advertising is a way to do so. So you can contextualize your ads based on people's searches. Um, and to be honest, that, that's a very nice uh, um, and relevant kind of advertising for the end user, for the publisher, and for the advertiser that wants to, let's say, show the ad. So I think that's a win-win for, uh, for, for all of them. Then the next phase is mobile, and um, mobile is a bit of a different uh, animal in its own. Uh, mobile is not only the fact that people are, let's say, opening a page, but it's also the location where the people are. Um, and having a real-time ping of somebody that is now, let's say, on the uh, Dubai airport is a valuable, very valuable piece of information that you can use um, to deliver the right advertising to this user, right? So if you have seen him before searching for a flight from Paris to Dubai, and he is now actually in Dubai, you don't have to show him an offer for a flight to Dubai, obviously. But this kind of smart things, uh, and in the, let's say the response time to show him an ad that is relevant, is nowadays possible. Um, so contextualize is one of the things, so based on what people actually search. 
and then the prospecting and retargeting is um, based on the trip intent. Um, and also the moment people have booked actually a flight, you can start selling him an upsell. So being it either uh, premium economy class for a flight or the hotel for, let's say, if you already booked a flight. So there are different ways to think of how to advertise to, uh, to the traveler. And last but not least, so it's not only about, uh, let's say, the faces in, in travel, right? So nowadays it's a 360 picture. So once people have traveled and come back home, basically it takes a few, uh, for some a few weeks, for some a bit longer to go into the next travel cycle. So again, if you know this user already and you know his past, you know what he likes to spend, where to go to, you can obviously target this user much cleverer than before. And it's not so much only about the use and behavior, it's also about, again, the geolocation. So I think uh, the years ahead are gonna be very, very interesting to use the location of people and, and how they move uh, combined with the search and book behavior. So to round it up, um, it was a bit short, maybe a bit too overwhelming, but um, I'm, I'm around here. If you have any questions, uh, please come by. And uh, thank you for my time. Uh, question up here. Thank you. One question I had was um, the, the advertising solutions that uh, you displayed on one of the slides. What, what can an independent hotel do? Because you know it all sounds very enterprise. And an independent hotel today is is not in a position in terms of budget or talent or awareness to tap into the technology leverage that you just spoke about. Yes. So the question up front here is how does an independent hotel deal with this big ecosystem, right? Um, so I think for an independent hotel, there are different ways. Obviously, you have to have a USP. You have to have something different than the other hotels have and, and use that USP to market. And you can do that through social media where you let other people talk about your hotel or your property. Um, you can obviously talk to your resellers because as an independent hotel, you probably work with OTAs or tour operators that uh, that's upsell your product, so you should look at, okay, how can they promote me within their marketing measures, because it's, it's a difficult to fight against an Expedia that puts a, a few billion dollars on the table every year for online marketing, and you as an independent hotel. So I think let your clients spread the bus in the sense of social media, and let the, let's say, in the value chain, those partners that, that sell your property uh, try to find ways with them to promote you in their online marketing channels. That's what I would advise. Okay. Thank you. Thanks very much. Well, we've got some more uh, time for panel and questions um, just in a few moments. So thank you very much. Please take your seat back at the stage. So, right, um, we've seen uh, some perspectives on then where mobile is going, and then also where mobile and how you're gonna reach your customers is going. And of course, one of the things which is most important in all of this is content. Content is absolutely at the center of actually being successful on any platform. And it's a, it's a space which has really changed quite a lot uh, because of mobile as well. So Adam, uh, the stage is yours. Please tell us a little bit about where content is moving in the mobile space. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Adam from a company called Travel World. And we produce content. So as Nick kindly said, it is about content, it's about the production of it, but it's also about the broadcast of it. It's going to have a library of, of rich media, but it's how are you gonna broadcast that? So over the next few minutes, I'm gonna be talking about uh, my company, as well as digital content and how it can help you. So it's more of an advice, as well as uh, an intro to Travel. So one of the things uh, that we need to consider, not just as us as consumers, but also us as property owners, um, travel agents, and so on, that we live in the world of now. What I mean by that is, uh, who's from Dubai? Or lives in Dubai? The majority, <laughs> the majority of us. So we've all taken Sheikh Zayed Road at some point, which is the main arterial road, the motorway, the highway. Well, if you drive down that road, you'll see approximately five million dirhams spent in advertising that month alone on billboards. They have a place in the market. It's great for brand awareness. But are you actually going to be taking note of what those billboards are? And are you going to remember those? Chances are probably not. If you're driving down the road and you've got a passenger in the car, 
the chances are they're not going to be disrupted um, with that message because they're going to be on their phone. And probably, if we're all to be honest, three-fifths of us driving are going to be on our phone at some point during that journey as well. Not that we should. I'm not endorsing that. So we live in this, this environment of now. Another example of that, if we are watching TV and we want to watch our favorite show and the broadcasters say that tune in at 7 o'clock and you're going to be able to watch this show, if that's not convenient to you because you're cooking or you're shopping or you're just doing something that's part of your life, then you'll watch that at quarter past nine when you want to. So my point is we live in the world of now. So what we need to be producing is enough content and broadcasting that to an audience that they can then consume that information when they want to. So there's a couple of stats just to emphasize this. 70% of all purchases are done, this is not my research, it's, it's provided by others, but 70% of the um, buying decision has actually been made before they reach your website. They know they're going to be buying, whether it's a hotel stay, a flight, um, a car, whatever that decision is, that online, the research is already done. What you need to do is be that resource, be that online platform um, who can convert that, that buying decision. So in the 70% of that purchase is done, we need to engage in order to convert. So talking about videos, videos take minutes to be seen on the search engines. But traditional SEO, which obviously has its place in the market for longevity, the traditional SEO um, takes weeks. And Mark Zuckerberg, amongst many, many others, have said that all internet traffic will be video by 2017. We can engage with video. You can put yourself there if the story is shown well. 78% of mobile users will watch a video every single week. So anyone that has a smartphone, they will be watching a video. And in this region, there was a stat I heard um, a couple of weeks ago that 85% will watch a video by 10.30 in the morning. So if you have content and you know your audience of when to broadcast that message, then, uh, then video is the way. And it's about creative content. What story are you trying to show? Is it relevant? Is it of interest? And they say a picture paints a thousand words, uh, which is true. Words are very important. However, videos paint 1.8 uh, million words. So we know how Im uh, impactful uh, photos are and images are, videos can be more so if it's done well. And 53% of websites that have video are going to be more likely to be on the front page of Google. And we know that Google is the, uh, the, one of the largest search engines, but it's also the place to be. However, the largest search engine in this region is YouTube. It's bigger than Twitter, Facebook, uh, and Instagram combined. So they are a video-based platform. And uh, we need to be very careful and strategic in where we invest and how we invest our advertising budget. So talk to, um, a little bit about Travel. We are a video production company with a broadcast platform. We create digital content, and we do quite a lot of it. But it's not just about creating the content, it's about broadcasting it. So we, whether it's for events, interviews, training, hospitality, fitness, lifestyle, any category of video, we produce that in, in this region. And in the past two years, we've, done, we've completed um, uh, and produced 9,300 hours of video. So when it comes to engaging content, we'd like to say we know what we're doing. Um, with that is a 71% engagement rate, 4 million plus views. We work with local and in international clients. Um, they can be from the small uh, standalone uh, properties to cafes, restaurants. I'll go into that in a minute. If a client has uh, video or digital content, 135% increased brand awareness, which is huge. Now, video doesn't need to be expensive, but it does need to be effective, and that's about the story. So, Travel is a mobile app, and let's go back. Here we go. So Travel's a mobile app. It's a place where you can find videos of everything that you could or should experience when you're in a city. So we launched in Dubai and Abu Dhabi, and we're soft launched in Mexico, New York, and Mumbai, and uh, more to increase over the next couple of years. But it's not a just a video-based uh, platform. 
because we encourage users to create content for you. So if you're a, a hotel or property owner or work in marketing, you want your audience that have already come into your residence or your property to be creating content for you. The beauty of that is it's free. They're going to be broadcasting it to their network. We're also a platform that rewards content creation. It's a platform that creates staff initiatives as well as um, a loyalty scheme. So anything that you could possibly do, we want our audience to show their city through their eyes. Um, I've been in Dubai eight years, so my experience of Dubai is going to be different to someone that's over here visiting or someone that's been here 10 years. So every time you are creating content and you have the ability to be able to share that to an audience, you have more chance of engagement. And when you're creating content, as I've mentioned a couple of times, there's a, a phrase that we've coined that we, we educate. It's not just uh, we go and film, but we educate our clients and then help them as well very much to show your audience everything. Tell them nothing. And this is a big part of, I suppose, the difference between marketing and PR. Marketing, you're telling someone something, come by me. Whereas the digital PR, as we've, we, we call it, is more about showing or advising your clients or uh, customers. So based on that, I hope this works. Uh, has anyone been into the Burj Al Arab? Okay, there's about five, six, seven, maybe a couple of more shy people. There's, let's say, a, a fifth of the audience here that have been into the Burj Al Arab. This is a case of, or an example of showing your audience everything and telling them nothing. Okay, so there's a one-minute video, six-second video of showing you that experience. If you were to go into the Burj Al Arab, the faces you're going to see, the, the, the architecture, as well as from the customer's point of view, to create a bit more engagement between someone that hasn't been there yet and will be there. So starting um, this presentation, which has been, say, nine, ten minutes, there's uh, quick-fire questions. We don't need to uh, all call out at once, but just to go through some stats, in the past 10 minutes, this is how quickly content is being created. How many tweets containing a YouTube video have been published? In 10 minutes, there's been 4,000 of them. And the amount of hours of video that have been uploaded in the past 10 minutes, 3,000. The consumer reviews are trusted by 70% more than um, just the, 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 the business advertising. 50% of all travel brands generate more direct bookings through social media. So social media being the platform is really, really important. You've got the right content to do the conversion. And travelers, 88% will review at some point during their booking decision. And the rich media content gets 94% more views. So videos are, and digital content is definitely the way, um, the way forward, and we all need to get onto this. Marketers, some of us here, have uh, well, about a third, 27% actually have a digital library to manage their assets. Something that we do is produce a bank of content that can monthly, weekly, daily, broadcast for you to your audience. 
So I'm Adam, I'm going to be around. If there's any uh, questions or advice that you need on digital marketing or content creation and story showing, um, please come find me. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, keep the mic. Okay, so great. We've seen some uh, different perspectives there, and uh, you guys have been tweeting. Uh, if you do want to ask any questions, use the hashtag. You've been making a lot of comments, but no questions yet. Um, so we're going to go straight into our discussion. And now uh, we've seen uh, some quite different perspectives here. I'm quite curious to know about the whole concept of walled gardens and where that's going. So um, walled gardens is really something that's become maybe an opportunity, maybe a challenge in mobile. As uh, I'm sure most of you will agree, you spend probably 90% of your time within two or three apps that you really love. So that might be Twitter, it might be Facebook, but you spend most of your time within a small number of apps. So I'm going to go straight to you, Gerd, and ask, what does that actually mean for brands in terms of actually then having the opportunity to reach and engage with potential audiences? Uh, yeah, very true. I mean, if you look at the usage of apps, it's uh, very narrow uh, and also a bit on, um, based on the occasion or the situation you're in, right? So what I think is the wisest thing to do is to look at those platforms that people are typically on. So if you look at mobile usage, uh, I think 50% is Facebook. So if you have a mobile strategy, missing out on Facebook is not very smart. So basically look at those platforms that somehow have an interesting access to your, the product that you offer and, and try to become, let's say, integrated or use the audience that's already there, right? So this, there's been a lot of debate in the early days on, I have a website, I want to bring users to my website. Why not integrate your content in a natural way on the website where they already are, right? So you don't have to, because every click people make, you lose up to 50%. So I would say look at the big guys and try to uh, make use of that Great. platforms. Yeah. Okay. Um, do we have any questions from the audience before I go to our next question from the panel? Don't be shy. Yeah, okay. Let's just, I will just run to the back, ask you to, don't worry, I got it. I'm fine. <laughs> uh, just introduce yourself. Good evening, everybody. I'm Sadat from India, and I work for the packages company. So we basically do design tool packages. So we are the holiday company. So I would want to know your views on how video or even beacons would try to advance and enhance our marketing techniques. Because most of the things which you have discussed are more about geolocation or hotels or plain vanilla products. When you talk of packages, what are your ideas on the same? Okay, that's a good question, actually. So, you're a travel agents? Yeah, I'm a Okay, and you sell package holidays. That's it. So, what Holiday is the opportunity is with mobile there? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. I certainly have an opinion on that. Um, I don't know if either of you have uh, thought yeah. at this stage. Um, yeah, lovely question. One of the, the biggest um, concerns like from, from you, and we hear it quite a lot, is about the, um, the broadcast of your services. Now, you've got the, the words that you write or the um, suppliers, providers write, you've got the images you use, but you need to have something immersive. And by creating the video content of what that person could or should experience, that will definitely, definitely um, elevate the chance of them booking with you from a digital content perspective. But then from uh, the Gert side of things, to actually be able to broadcast that to a, a, a network or a market is also really important. So it's having the content and broadcasting it. Yeah, good. Any, any reflex, reflections on that? Yeah, sure. Uh, so your question was what, what beacons and mobile can do for you as a tour operator, correct? So I would say mobile is a bigger opportunity than, let's say beacon technology is, in my opinion, very much on um, how do you say ad hoc decisions or let's say information that you can use when people are on a physical location. I say if you order, uh, if you would buy a package holiday, the location where you're at is not really depending on that, right? So, um, so I see mobile more of an opportunity where um, emotion, content, um, posts from people that used your service before, uh, be it through Instagram, Instagram uh, Tumblr, Let's say those platforms that, that show images instead of prices and stories, I think that, that can help you. Um, 
it's anyway a mix, right? But I think mobile uh, is, is uh, so so the, the Facebook, Instagram, so that suite would help you definitely to uh, not on a price level, but on let's say what does your package holiday has to offer in, in an emotional sense. Well, so that's what I would uh, consider. And I would certainly sort of echo that, and I would just say that you know in terms of selling uh, more package, you know, package holidays and things like that. I think you know you really have to start to think about how you're going to build a relationship, how you're going to actually build some sort of community. That can be very, very small. Sometimes a community is also about creating content and creating really powerful experiences that you can then share on a much larger scale. That you can actually then use native advertising inside these different social media to reach your potential customers. And so I think the opportunity for mobile is certainly in the early stage seeing yourself, you, you've got a sort of race to the bottom or a race to the top right now. And being in the middle is, is probably where you don't want to be. So you can be the cheapest, and you can just provide a service at a, you know, at a good price, and, and then you will win. Or you can provide something really exclusive. It doesn't have to be the most expensive. It might be quite niche. And that's also where you can, you can really have some wins. That's where you know, having content, really powerful content, and then seeding that out and engaging people in social media, which is now entirely driven in the mobile space, that is where you have a great opportunity. I wouldn't, probably wouldn't focus on the interactions in destinations that beacons and things like that can bring you. Yeah. I think that's probably not important for your business unless you have an infrastructure that goes with it. Does that help answer your question? And put, and put proper resources on it, right? So if you, th if you believe in this, then just doing it next to other thousands of other things is not going to fly. So if you think it's, and you, you will see the payoff quite soon, put a dedicated resource on it and, and make it happen. Because um, there's a lot of, let's say, experts in this field that can also help you. But if you do it as many of, yeah, as next to other, many other things, then it's just going to die off because it has to be repeated or uh, refreshed, let's say, every day here. Yeah. Yep, exactly. Okay, great. So, do we have any other questions from the audience? Yep, uh, lady over here. We'll just get the mic working. And do introduce yourself as well. Thank you. Is that working? Yep, it's working. Sort of. Um, hi, my name is Karen Osman. I'm from a company called Travel Inc. Are there any particular mobile engagement uh, marketing strategies you recommend that pertain only to the travel and tourism industry as opposed to any other industry? Uh, you're, you're curious about mobile marketing strategies unique to the travel and industry? Yeah. Okay. Um, well, I think that the, probably my answer to that is that the travel industry itself is unique. Um, so I think, you know, you have to approach it from the, the travel life cycle point of view. And this is something that I think we can very often get excited about the technology without actually thinking about the strategy behind it. So I, I would certainly say from my point of view that actually having, uh, understanding the difference between generating early stage awareness uh, and then interacting and tapping into opportunities on the spot, I think that clear understanding is really important. Um, and also understanding that consumers make their decisions very much on the go now. Um, we expect to be able to arrive and then decide what to do. So this is something that's quite different. I would say there aren't probably any, you know, one, a one-fits-all solution or approach which is right for any business or in the travel industry because there's many, many thousands of solutions uh, depending on what you want to do that it's really about understanding those stages and making the right choices. I don't know if either of you have some thoughts on that. Yeah, very much. We, um, we, we get asked this from various marketing um, managers, directors uh, throughout the UAE. And one of the things that, well, our answer is, what is your current strategy? What's your marketing calendar looking like? And then what are your focus points? So is it for brand awareness? Is it to generate footfall or uh, a conversion? And I suppose nowadays most of the answers that we get are it's not just for brand awareness, but it'd be nice to have. Or it's not just about conversion, but obviously we need to generate sales if we're going to be plowing X into uh, marketing strategy. So I don't, I don't really think that there is one, as Nick said, there's one niche. It's about building your audience and through, uh, through being organized, just create a, uh, a calendar and then, then just plug some some budget into that social media um, broadcast, uh, as Gert said, is a, a regular stage. 
Gert, any thoughts on that? Um, yeah, so for me, the strategy uh, is, is compiled out of a couple of channels, right? So it's about storytelling and, and let's say first of getting the awareness, then getting the preference as, as you as one of the suppliers or the brands out there. Um, and then once this preference is there, then obviously the price and let's say the bookability comes into place. Um, so that's a bit of the storytelling. On the other side, it's also interesting, what do you measure on the, on the on, let's say, underneath your campaign, right? So people, you have multiple touch points with users and you want to know what channel does actually contribute to, at the end of the day, the sale. Because I agree, a lot of marketing strategies try to push brand but want to do sales at the same time. So, I mean, obviously you could do it, but it's not the ideal world. So as long as you are also able to measure what does a brand campaign do for your sales at the end of the day, because you can see this user and the contact points nowadays, at least in the digital world, uh, you can also make decisions um, by looking at the data, so which channel do I need to push more to the end of the day, create loyalty and create bookings. Yeah, I think certainly some of the unique kind of aspects of mobile, like I showed at the beginning about seeing how people travel within a, a location. And if you're a business as well, so some of the examples I showed you are uh, really for a whole destination where you use mobile data, it's sort of macro. But if you then think on a micro level within a business, you can still measure movement and everything. This is something which is really, really unique and actually is somewhat unique to travel as well, no, needing to know how people travel and how they behave in that mobile space. So I, I think it's something that's really exciting. And also when we think about the physical web and what's going to come out of that, we maybe will go right back to that earlier question that we've been asking three years ago about roaming costs and needing to provide Wi-Fi. We might be asking that question once again about how do we seamlessly ensure people are always connected in order to tap into those opportunities to interact with them. Because of course, if you're a business traveler you, traveler, you might be extremely loyal to a certain hotel brand. But if you're a leisure traveler, you might be involved with a business or involved with the experience, but you don't have that previous loyalty. So that whole app approach isn't going to be the right approach. This is where there is a need for better infrastructure and better solutions to keep people connected throughout the whole trip. I think Dubai is probably my nightmare when it comes to connectivity uh, because actually it's not only outside of any cheap roaming zone from Europe, but it's also an absolute nightmare when it comes to connecting to Wi-Fi. Nothing is open. Everything needs passwords and everything like that. That means if I then want to be able to communicate with my environment, it's pretty much impossible because it's just so hard to even get online. You, you only do it because you need to. So that's something that the travel industry has to solve. Um, we're nearly up, but I will take one more question if we have one more question. The gentleman at the back there. And we'll have to keep this one quick. Just introduce yourself. <laughs> we seem to have a mic problem today. <laughs> Hello. Is it fine? Yeah. Is it working? Yeah. Is it fine? Yeah, speak yeah. louder. Yeah. Hi. Yeah, we so, can hear. Hey, uh, my name is Praveen. So, well, we have a travel agency, basically an online travel agency that's in Vegas. So, uh, my question was about the millennial traveler. You know, if you talk about, uh, you know, the specific generation which we call as a millennial traveler. So, you know, we, we cover up them through a lot of different, you know, channels. The mobile is one of the channels, you know, through which we cover up them. So any, any specific, uh, you know, strategy or which we have through marketing, we can, you know, make them, yeah. you know, uh, a little over communicator or ju just to be, make them more, uh, you know, um, advanced in terms of technologies or provide them the more information so that our, you know, uh, you know, th th they, they'll believe, you know, our agency is, is actually in the right track or, you know, covering up that generation, I, because I believe that millennial travel is, is a maximum, you know, the people using the mobile, you know, the technology are trying to be covered up, you know, th through that uh, technology, we, we are covering the most of, most of the population from there. Okay, so I, if we're having a little trouble hearing, I don't know if you guys said, I, I think it was more a comment about the, Arab was it about the Arabian travel, traveler? That's the millennial traveler, so basically a, a specific... Thanks. Millennial, okay, millennial, yes. Yeah. Yes, okay, millennial traveler. Millennial traveler and mobile. <laughs> I think that was the question, right? Uh, wow, that's a big one. Um, 
Okay, we'll get just a couple of reflections and then we have to close. So um, I'll go to you first. Yeah, with a millennial, uh, millennial traveler, uh, <laughs> you do need to be very aware and conscious of what they look for. Um, one of the things that Nick said, and just to reiterate, is it, <coughs> creating loyalty takes time. Just like creating a friendship, you can't just do that um, short term, it needs to be built over a period of time. Uh, millennials have a very short uh, attention span and they are looking for that engagement to build loyalty. We'll, they will do it. I'd like to say I am one, but they will do it, but you just need to take time to broadcast your message, a relevant message to them. And Gert, a thoughts on that? Yeah, I, I kind of echo that as well. Um, what is on top of that is that the millennials um, are very much about transparency. So nowadays you, you have the feeling you can compare everything and anything on price, uh, characteristics, etc. So you have to be at least available to be compared. So you have to be visible. You have to be, uh, if it's the meta channel, you have to be part of the meta channel. And at the end, let's say that's the first part. The second part is they're very much looking at influencers. So if friends or somebody who's leading the herd chooses some direction, all of a sudden that destination is hot or that hotel is hot. So you have to also check who is, let's say, leading the herd, in, uh, uh, especially in social media, um, besides the fact of being uh, visible and findable all the time. Yeah, I, I would echo that. It's a, it's a digital first generation. Generation Z, the ones after them, or it's a mobile first generation. These guys, you can't treat them for fools. You can't uh, hide anything which isn't true. You can't tell them it's a five star when it's a three star. You can't tell them it's $100 if it's $50. You have to entertain them, keep them uh, highly entertained, highly interactive, highly collaborative, and everything has to have some kind of mobile, digital, fulfilled experience. Just going and looking at things is not what they want to do. They want to go find things on their phone, explore things, interact with their environment. So I hope that answers your question. Uh, we are now out of time. So I would just like to thank you all for being here, and also to thank our wonderful panel. Please give them a round of applause. And I'll invite you to join our next session on Wednesday, so we give you a break. <laughs> the Wednesday session is on 360 degree video. We're talking about storytelling, selling and travel, and places with immersive content. And this is going to be really exciting. We have Calibre and Google joining us for that, with some really deep insights into that space. Thank you very much, and see you on Wednesday. Thank you.